New York State is Hillary country. By the fact that uh, Hillary Clinton is the senator here. I was surprised to find out that the Obama campaign uh, has hundreds of organizers working hard to uh, steal as many delegates as possible for Barack Obama for president. Uh, I was invited to uh, Camp Obama right here in Midtown Manhattan. Let's find out uh, what they're up to. What's the difference? What's the main distinction between the Howard Dean campaign and all that enthusiasm, all those big crowds, and this campaign? What's the biggest distinction between the two? And I'll tell you, it's this. Howard Dean never did this. What is it? Training, putting a large investment up front about the strategy, the tactics of how we win. This is actually the very first campaign that I have ever worked on. Uh, Senator Obama inspired me um, and has not only given me hope for my own future, but that of my three little ones. I went door to door in New Hampshire. I'd never canvassed before, and I've never volunteered for a candidate before. And then I read The Audacity of Hope. And I read Audacity of Hope. I read Dreams from My Father. I haven't been active in the political process ever even though I was taught that, you know, politics is important. A couple of months ago, I heard that Barack was coming to New Hampshire, and I, I went to go see him, and I had heard that he was a hope monger, and so I, I wasn't really sure what to expect. And when I went, I was really surprised because 90% of his speech was about how exactly those proposals that I had read about were going to get done. He detailed where the money was going to come from, the kind of institutions that he was going to put in place to make sure that they would actually get followed through upon, and he was just amazing. He really convinced me. Um, right now what we're doing is we started this morning by learning a little bit more about the Obama campaign, uh, learning about women for Obama, and how to use online organizing tools. So obviously that's a really important component of the campaign, and we're learning a little bit more about how to use those websites and organize people around online sites and blogs so that we can gain voters and um, fundraise a little more. You guys weren't talking baseball, okay. right? No, we're, we're talking. So. You talk about you drive. Okay. You know, given that so many seniors actually are not necessarily as comfortable with new media, we're thinking of having a New York City-wide letter drive. And so what we do is we go to senior centers, addressing of some of the talking points or some of the messaging that Barack and his uh, mission for how he will reach out to the aging population as president of the United States. Well, how are these? Delegates distributed. Anybody know that? This gentleman knows. Proportionally by congressional districts, if you all you gotta get is fifteen percent of the votes in those districts and you're allocated X amount of delegates. Fifteen percent. That's like me, you, and this table that make up fifteen percent, right? We ought to be able to how many congressional districts are there in New York? Twenty nine. So more than likely, we're going to get some points, some delegates out of every one of those congressional districts. All we got to do is get 15%. So we're going to win some points, some delegates. The more people that vote for us, the more delegates we get in those congressional districts. Today we are learning about how to organize. Um, we have been in a three-day training session um, put on by the Barack Obama campaign because we are trying to mobilize our grassroots action to um, really make a difference in the campaign and really get other people involved. Yesterday we focused a lot on um, on community organizing and, and how to connect with people about you know their concerns and, and so forth and try and get leaders involved and, and so forth. And today we're focusing more on the actual tactics. We're um, talking about phone banks and community outreach and online organizing and it's really exciting actually. The way that we get other people to join us is by talking to them and trying to figure out their self-interest. What is their personal story that's driving them? What are the things that they care about? And Barack is really good at figuring out what people really care about. 
education, affordable education, affordable health care. They're very important issues to me because I know what it's like to pay for education. I know what it's like to try to find people to help you pay for education so that you can get a master's degree, so that you can improve your life. And I know how hard it is. Well, I'm in uh, Brooklyn. Uh -huh. And I've been a resident of Brooklyn for six years now, and I've been working in the 11th Congressional District. Uh, Shirley Chisholm's district, you know, she was the first black woman to run for president and really kind of laid up a lot of groundwork for Barack. Uh, that's the 11th Congressional District. Um, and then there's also the 10th Congressional District. There are two contiguous districts that go from downtown Brooklyn all the way across Brooklyn. Uh, you know, there's Haitian immigrants and West Indians and Africans and just tons of African Americans from all over the economic spectrum. And given his background, you know, given his dad's from Kenya, came down to the U.S., and um, regardless of growing up under a single mom, um, regardless of um, where whatever obstacles he must have faced uh, along the line, he was able to rise above that. Uh, Valda and I are beginning to organize Long Island in support of Barack Obama. Contrary to what people may think, Long Island is more than the Hamptons. It's more than just a vacation or a weekend spot. We not only have black and Hispanic uh, populations, we have every Asian population you can think of, from Indian to Pakistani to Chinese, etc. Uh, we actually have a uh, resource who can translate into Chinese for us, um, you know, so that we do some of that outreach. It's really now our uh, ability to reach them and give them somebody to talk to to say, how can I help? And so it's been very exciting. I had a lot of women come up to me um, and say, all right, as a woman, I feel like I ought to support Hillary Clinton. Why is it that you, as a woman, are not supporting Hillary Clinton? Um, and they were very sincere in their interest. And, you know, I'm a big fan of Hillary Clinton. I always have been. I used to be very supportive of Hillary Clinton. I think she's done a great job as senator. The problem that we had with John Kerry was that he couldn't relate to anyone, um, you know, outside of, you know, Cambridge. Um, and, and, and that's the big difference. And I, I think we're going to see the same problem with Hillary this time around. But I believe Barack Obama has a better chance to be conciliatory and unite people generally. I feel like Hillary Clinton, unfortunately, is a polarizing candidate, um, partially because of her husband, partially because of her history. Uh, just she tends to bring people out to vote against her and I worry about her chances in the general election and I feel that we have lost so much momentum that it's it's really imperative that we go with a candidate that supports the kinds of views that doesn't continue to keep us polarized I, I really believe uh, that it's not a bunch of talk that Obama can bring people together he really I mean he really can't just look at this room you know I mean it's all different types of people in there. I feel like we need to change not only individual policies, but we need to change the process by which those policies get made. And I feel like all of these issues, the war, health care, the environment, they're stagnating in this kind of, you know, mix of, you know, in this special interest group funding. And so even if we do, you know, God willing, get a Democratic president into the White House, if that president is beholden to special interest groups, I just don't know that anything will actually get done. This past weekend, we had Camp Obama.